Good morning. It's loud. My name is Commander Andrew Fine, and I am a team leader in OGD's Office of Bioequivalence Division of Clinical Review. My talk will reinforce the earlier comparative analyses presentations and apply many of those principles previously discussed to my presentation. And in my presentation, we'll focus on injectable drug device combination products and the comparative analyses to support those generic applications. At the end of my presentation, participants will be able to understand comparative analyses approach to injectable combination products and identify common comparative analyses deficiencies for those injectable combination products. And finally, at the end, I will provide product development tips. Note that throughout my presentation, I will use case studies and examples to support each of these objectives. <clears throat> First, I want to set the stage and discuss the types of injectable products that will be used throughout my presentation. These are pre-filled syringes, injection kits, pen injectors, and finally, auto-injectors. Each of these will be defined in the subsequent slides, and each will also be accompanied by a case study. <clears throat> As a review, <clears throat> there are three comparative analyses that are performed between a proposed generic and its reference product. These are a labeling comparison, a comparative task analysis, <clears throat> and a physical comparison. Each comparative analysis is unique to the corresponding RLD <clears throat> and should focus on the device and product characteristics of that RLD. These characteristics include the context of use. For example, if the product is used in an emergency setting or a non-emergency setting. <clears throat> the end user. Is the product administered directly by a patient or a parent or a caregiver versus administered by a healthcare professional? The complexity of the device. The use environment. Is this product administered at home, or is it used in an inpatient or outpatient clinical setting? And finally, other patient factors are the, are the patient population and the underlying disease. These characteristics also need to be considered. For example, if the patient population is elderly and has limited hand strength, this characteristic may be factored into the design of the reference product, and therefore should be also factored in to the design of the corresponding generic. Earlier this morning, Dr. Lin shared two key definitions used in the comparative analyses guidance. I want to review these definitions once again because they will be used throughout my presentation. The first, external critical design attributes. These are features that directly affect how users perform a critical task that is necessary in order to use or administer the drug product. Critical tasks. These are user tasks that, if performed incorrectly, or not performed at all, would or could cause harm to the patient or user, where harm is defined to include compromised care. First injectable drug device combination product I will detail are pre-filled syringes. These products can be healthcare or patient administered. They include multiple routes of administration, subcutaneous, intravenous, intramuscular, just to name a few. These products are pre-assembled with a needle, or the user must attach the needle prior to administration. The RLD for these products is typically a pre-filled syringe as well, but could be an ampule vial for injection. And finally, pre-filled syringes are usually the least complicated injectable combination products. <clears throat> to better understand the comparative analysis approach for a pre-filled syringe, I want to detail a case study. For this product, we have an RLD needle on the left and a hypothetical generic on the right. I want to discuss a few characteristics of this RLD. It is a pre-filled syringe for emergency use. After connecting the needle, the product is self-injected by the patient. What if a generic applicant proposes a needle safety guard, pictured in the generic on the right? The safety guard is used to cover the needle following administration. <clears throat> this differs from the RLD that doesn't contain a needle safety guard. Remember, this product is for emergency use. And this design is problematic, 
as the patient, unfamiliar with the, diff the design difference, may inadvertently cover the needle prior to in injection. This would delay or even prevent administration of the drug. Because the RLD doesn't have the safety guard, this type of treatment delay is not possible with the RLD. As a result, this difference in needle design would be considered an other design difference, as it may potentially affect an external critical design attribute that involves administration, clinical use, and performance when substituted for the RLD. Also, additional training may be required prior to use of this generic product if it were substituted for the RLD. I want to move on to injection kits. These products are usually healthcare professional administered, but can be patient administered as well, as you will learn in the next case study. <clears throat> Assembly and reconstitution is often required prior to administration, and injection kits come in a variety of clinical settings, both emergency and non-emergency use. For an injection kit case study, we'll, we will discuss the RLD kit pictured here. This is an emergency use product that is administered by a patient or a care caregiver. I want to detail a few, but not all, of the critical tasks that are necessary to administer this product. Prior to injection, the user or caregiver must remove the needle cover, insert the needle into the vial, remove the needle, and then reconstitute the solution and insert the same syringe and needle into the vial and withdraw the liquid for injection. Remember, the device and product characteristics and administration steps of the RLD should be understood when designing the generic product. As, a, as an example, what if the proposed product had a significantly shorter plunger length, which would make it more difficult to grasp the syringe when withdrawing the medication for injection? This design difference needs to be assessed according to the context of use as well. And this product is for emergency use, and the end user is a patient who may not be familiar with different designs of injectable products, unlike a healthcare professional who will be more familiar with a variety of injectable products. Therefore, this shorter plunger length would be considered an other design difference, as it would affect an external critical design attribute that impacts a critical task. As a result, the applicant would need to redesign their product or provide comparative use data, which is appropriate under an ANDA, to support this difference in design of their product. Moving on, the next drug device combination product is a pen injector. These products are patient administered. These are multi-dose pre-filled delivery devices. And these are used in a variety of indications and in patient populations. For a pen injector case study, let's consider a hypothetical RLD pen injector displayed on this slide. This is a chronic use product that is injected daily by the patient. This RLD device contains ergonomic and tactile features. Generic applicants need to understand the RLD device features when designing their product. For example, if the RLD contains these ergonomic and tactile features, to cater to a specific patient population. For example, a patient with dexterity issues, these design features would be considered external critical design attributes. And therefore, if a generic device does not contain these features, those would be considered other design differences. However, if the RLD includes these features but they're not related to an external critical design attribute, a generic applicant that did not have these features, those those situations would be considered minor differences and acceptable. Finally, I'll move on to auto-injectors. These are patient or caregiver administered and are designed for single use, often in emergency settings. The difference, these are the more complicated devices. And the difference with auto-injectors is that the device has to do all the work. How much drug is delivered, how deep the needle goes, and how, how fast it fires. Therefore, for auto-injectors, equivalent delivery of the drug to the site of action is dependent upon the device constituent functioning the same as the RLD. 
For the previously discussed injectable products, the end user will determine the, del the delivery of the drug, what angle the needle is inserted, and how quickly the liquid gets to the site of action. For the auto-injector case study, the next two slides discuss an example of a recently approved epinephrine auto-injector that's used in an emergency setting by a patient or a caregiver. As you can see, there are differences in the user interface. The RLD on the left comes in a carrier tube, while the generic on the right does not include a carrying tube. This slide depicts the steps necessary to prepare the injection by pulling off a blue safety release. The RLD is depicted on the left and the generic on the right. There is a slightly different design in the blue safety release and the corresponding instructions for use. For this example, the applicant provided information and data that the differences, the lack of the carrying tube and the differences in instructions for use don't impact an external critical design attribute. Based on review of this data, it was determined that the generic could be substitutable and it was approved. This case study demonstrates that even with small differences and in an emergency setting, the outcome of comparative analysis can still be acceptable. Moving away from the specific injectable types and examples, the next few slides will apply to all injectable products. There are certain differences that are generally considered minor and acceptable. First, the physical color. The physical color components can differ. However, if the color is associated with an external critical design attribute, or aids in the execution of a critical task, or distinguishes strength and concentration, these differences may not be minor. <clears throat> Additionally, from a clinical perspective, differences in device material may also be considered minor differences. Now I want to share other common deficiencies that were not previously discussed in the injectable case studies. These include situations where the instructions for use do not accurately represent the test product, or the images and labeling do not accurately represent the proposed product. Also, if dose and, measure, dose and measurement markings don't correspond to doses recommended in the prescribing information and differ from RLD dose markings, these differences would be considered other design differences, and applicants would be asked to redesign their product or provide comparative use data. Before I conclude, this slide details development tips for injectable drug device combination products. First, understand clearly if the RLD is patient-administered or administered by a healthcare professional, and incorporate this into the risk assessment of your comparative analyses. Recognize if the product is for emergency or non-emergency use. Ensure labeling accurately describes all tasks necessary for the proposed product. Design the user interface to minimize differences from the RLD. For example, no new critical tasks or design features that are not present on the RLD. And finally, request assessment and controlled correspondences or pre-ANDA meetings with specific product development questions. I want to close with a quick recap and a few summary statements. First, injectable drug device combination products come in a variety of delivery systems. Generic development of these products should include comparative analyses to assess potential differences with a focus on minimizing those differences. When developing a test product, generic development should focus on the RLD device features and the setting of use. This includes the complexity of the device, whether the product is administered by a patient or a healthcare professional, and finally, if the product is used in emergency or non-emergency settings. Thank you.